Okay then, so the time has finally come. The engine is being dropped back into the car. Got it up on the engine hoist. And when it goes back in, we need to make sure that the AC compressor and the power steering pump are levered out of the way because there's still the bracket to go onto the engine. That bolts on just here. Once the bracket is back on, the um, AC compressor and the power steering pump can then be bolted to that bracket. Obviously, the main thing that we need to do is line the clutch and flywheel up with the gearbox and that spline there needs to go through into there. But when we've got the engine in, that's obviously when we can start bolting everything up. There is just two points, two engine mount points, just one there, one on the other side. It just drops on there and there. Still start lowering it, yeah? You watch that slow the front Lower it down a bit then. While, while pushing it forward at the same time. Yeah. It actually won't be in one. You want to push this side down as well. Okay then, so the engine is now in, it is connected up to the gearbox. I've actually tried the clutch and everything is working as it should, you know it's going into every single gear. So now it's just a case of putting all the bolts back in for the bow housing and obviously then we can start um, putting everything else back in place. Okay then, so a lot has changed since I last checked in and we are not too far away from completing so then we have this side of the engine is completely done so the exhaust is bolted up that's torqued down with the uh, exhaust bracket that bolts the uh, the turbo to the downpipe then obviously we have the engine mounts done we have this earth wire the ground down here that is uh, bolted up we have all of the exhaust sensors um, connected up, all of the bow housing bolts, they are now torqued up. Coming round to this side, we have this coolant hose, which is the uh, heater return pipes that goes from the heater matrix to the engine block that is now bolted in. And then all of these connectors around here. So we have a couple of vacuum pipes that's connected. We have this vacuum pipe that goes down into the engine block that is now connected up. All these cables around here, they're tucked nicely in their correct positions. Fuel lines, they're now connected up. The positive cable that runs down here, that is connected up in there. It's just needs to have these two that go to the alternator this bracket is bolted on and now all that's left is to fit the power steering pump the ac compressor and then the alternator on top and that is the wiring loom plugged back into the ecu which means this cover can go back on okay then so another update the drive belt is back on which means the power steering pump the ac compressor and the alternator is back in, everything's plugged in. The uh, positive cable is bolted onto the alternator. And now, I'm pretty sure all that's left is the coolant hoses and the air intake hoses. So you have two that go from the intercooler. This one goes from the turbo to the intercooler. This one goes from the intercooler to the intake manifold. Then it's just the air box and then this pipe that goes down to the turbo. And I think this is just one of the coolant hoses. But after that, we should be pretty much there then. And just like that, the engine is now complete, I hope. 
Now all that's left is to put some clean oil in and some water. So I'm just going to fill it with water. I'm not going to bother filling it with coolant because I'm actually going to do a complete coolant flush once we get this thing running. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, fill it up with water, fill it up with oil, and then we'll try to start it. Okay then, so we are in the car. As you can see, we have power. That's because the battery is now connected up. I'm not gonna to attempt to start it yet. What I'm gonna do is just check what the oil level is showing at. So I'm just gonna put the ignition on. Increase battery discharge. We have a service light on. Let's just put the ignition on. We have glow plugs, ignition switched on. Let's shut the door. Set time and date. Uh, what's that? Fog light, front light failure. Yeah, so fog lights, that's because we haven't got the fog lights plugged in. Uh, set time and date, it's fairly standard stuff, nothing much to worry about at the moment. Uh, we're going to go to vehicle information, uh, vehicle status, engine oil level. So, engine oil level below minimum, add one liter of oil immediately. So, that's what we're going to do. Okay. Okay then, so I've put some more oil in and it says it is a sufficient level to start the engine. I've also checked the dipstick and that is looking good. Obviously we'll need to put more in once the oil has circulated, gone to the fuel filter housing and everything like that. But we can now attempt to start it. First one I'm going to do is cycle the ignition on and off, like I said, to get fuel to the fuel pump, to the fuel rail and the injectors and everything. So we'll do that first then we'll try to crank it and then start it. So if you haven't already worked it out, we have a flat battery. Now, I was kind of hoping this wouldn't be the case, but to be honest, it is to be expected. The battery was left connected for a good couple of weeks before I decided to disconnect it. And obviously it went in and out of the car. You know, there was lights being turned on, various different things. So obviously that's been enough to drain the battery below the 12 volts that it needs to start the engine. Obviously, you know, with with no fuel being in the system, it needs to do a whole lot of cranking before the fuel um, can get to the injectors and the engine can actually fire up. So that means even more um, cranking power is needed, even more um, voltage is needed in the battery. And so long story short, it hasn't um, fired up. Now, I did just have the battery on a trickle charge for about four or five hours and I don't know if you just noticed, but it was pretty close to firing up the first time that I just went to um, start it then I could feel it like it was starting to shake as if it was, you know, a few more cranks and it just would have fired up. But then obviously, as I kept just cranking it, the battery was going lower and lower and lower and it just simply wasn't enough. So I think what I'm going to do now is stick the trickle charger overnight, you know, for a good like 12 hours or so. And hopefully that should be enough. Um, you know to give it the ampage that it needs to finally crank and um, 
with regards to the couple of the error codes that came up on the dash so there was the there was a glow plug one there was the service one like where you know it's got like the picture of the car in the air and then there was what else is there there was also one that was saying like windscreen wiper fault i don't know what that up to be honest i think they're all sort of linked to the um low battery voltage i'm hoping so anyway i hope this is not like not like a whole bunch of errors just came up um, but saying that, I think the glow plug module is probably because I haven't started the engine since, you know, I have taken the glow plugs out. Uh, but I did put the ignition on after I took the glow plugs out, so the error came up. So I think because it hasn't started, it hasn't had a chance to remove the glow plug error. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think there is a problem with the glow plugs. Obviously, the new, the new glow plug. So yeah, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it should start tomorrow. And I'm hoping the only problem is just a low voltage on the battery. But like I said, we have to wait now. More waiting, of course. Um, but yeah, I just, I just hope it fires up tomorrow. I'm hoping it's just a flat battery. But I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Okay then, so we finally managed to get the thing started. I'm so happy. Obviously, we know the reason why it wouldn't start in the first place. It was a flat battery and just didn't have enough amperage. But because the battery was on charge overnight for a good seven or eight hours, it just gave it enough amperage to be able to crank over. And obviously, it did do a lot of cranking before it finally fired up. And that's because it had to wait for the fuel pressure to build up and finally get to the fuel rail uh, into the injectors and obviously into the cylinders but yeah i'm just so happy once i knew that it was like cranking over a good few times and it started to get faster and faster and faster and that was like you know i know it's gonna fire as long as it keeps the amperage up there as long as we get you know we don't drop below sort of 11.7 volts i know we are going to fire this thing up now and uh, yeah, just so happy that it did. Um, I actually t took the car for a little drive, not very far because you know I'm missing pretty much uh, the whole of the front end. Um, but I just took it um, up and down my road just to make sure that it drives under its own power. You know, we have all of all of the gears and everything. So yeah, that's um, that's good. 
There's actually not a whole lot left to do. All that's pretty much left to do is reassemble the front end. You know, we have various different trim panels uh, to go into the engine bay, like the um, cabin filter, um, the engine cover, then we have the front bumper, the crash bar, and all those other little things. But I'm so glad that we have managed to get the engine started. And uh, of course, I checked for any leaks. There's no um, water leaks or oil leaks as far as I can see right now. Um, you know, time will obviously tell if, you know, gaskets and whatever else have failed, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, I've done a good job uh, with this um, engine rebuild. So yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just happy. I'm just over the moon that it finally started because it can be one of them, you know, when you've gone through all that work and when the car's been off the road for as long as it has, it's like, is this all, all this actually gonna be worth it? But in the end it is, like it's put my mind at rest now. You know, I know it's had a complete new time and chain kit. So, you know, fingers crossed that should be good now for the um, you know, duration of the car's life now, I hope. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna probably gonna end this video and then I'll do everything else, all the other little bits, you know, reassembling the front end and whatever in a, a separate video. Oh, I wanna fit a new fuel filter and I also want to do complete coolant flush as well so they may be separate videos in on their own I'm not too sure yet but yeah I want to thank you guys for watching this far please give this video a like leave a comment down below subscribe if you haven't already done so and I'll see you guys in that next video peace